So I'd like to tell you a story about a calculator. Now, I randomly came across this thing at a thrift store having no idea what the HP 35, or in this case, the HP 45, was all about. So I'd like to tell you a story that I think is going to illustrate why this is important and that it did have some kind of influence on the personal computer revolution. Now, what is the HP 35? Well, let me let one Mr. Wozniak explain that real quick iPhone 6 of its time, the HP 35 scientific calculator was introduced the HP 35 calculator and it was taking the world by storm. It was causing dramatic social revolutions. It was very clear that slide rules would be obsolete within a few years and they were. I was so intrigued by this being the most incredible product I'd ever seen in my life. So that gives us some context and we'll come back to the Waz, but what I think illustrates this even better is this story from Andrew Berg. Now, he posted this in July 2000 on HP Memories Forum. I can give a link to that below. And it starts in 1971. For a high school graduation present, his parents got him a beautiful slide rule that he unfortunately did not get to use as shortly thereafter he picked up a sharp four-function calculator with a green fluorescent display. And from there he says this, I used the Sharp for a while, then in 1973, a guy showed me this HP 35 thing. The data entry was weird, but I caught on in a few milliseconds. It was so natural. I had to have one. I sold my Sharps uh, for $70 to a student I was tutoring, and I was able to buy that beautiful 35 used. I didn't have the foresight or the money to see if there was an upgraded model. The word upgrade didn't exist until Microsoft came onto the scene many years later. So I bought that 35. I think I paid $150, but it sure was worth it. In 1975, I had a friend who also had one. He said, hey, I know this guy. <laughs> Give me your 35 and 50 bucks and he'll rewire it and turn it into a 45. I'm thinking, oh, what are you crazy? Give you my 35 and 50 bucks? But he was a good, trusted friend and the 45 was even cooler. So a week later, the calculators were ready, but I did not want to wait to have mine shipped. Since I was a private pilot and we always need places to go, I could fly up to San Jose and get the calculators directly from this guy. He was somebody working at Hewlett Packard who designed calculators, that's all I knew. He had a few spare test chips or, um, quote, leftovers, and I got a great new calculator. I met him at the airport and he was thrilled to death that I would take him up for a buzz. Uh, then my father, my traveling companion, bought us all lunch and this HP guy had 43 cents in his pocket. So my new friend, Steve from HP, and I had fun. He gave me spare parts and an old HP 80 that I repaired. I even built an HP 55 too. He visited me, we played with modems, VCRs, in those days a box more than a cubic foot, <laughs> and other stuff. Uh, one day we were hanging out and he says, hey, let's build a computer. So he sat down on the living room floor and proceeded to do so. I visited him and he showed me around at his other friend Steve's garage and some circuit boards there. His mother made his sandwiches and my friend from HP says, Hey Andrew, why don't you move up here and help me start a computer company? And I said, I'm not ready to move out of my parents' house yet. Uh, but I visited again and was impressed. It was too late. Steve Wozniak went on without me. I never met Steve Jobs again, but I hear he's been successful too. So that is kind of an incredible story to me. Um, Steve Jobs' mom sounds nice, but poor Andrew, he missed the founding of Apple by that much. But I still recommend checking out the rest of his story. I changed a couple parts, but there are lots of interesting stories uh, still left in that forum. Uh, Wozniak helped him program his 65, and uh, there's a cool upgrade he talks about on the 45. It came with a stopwatch that was not documented because it was terribly inaccurate. Um, evidently, there's some equation you can do that will compensate for it, uh, but I didn't quite get it to work. So there is an upgrade that Andrew did. You can upgrade the crystal, or you can install a crystal, I should say, and uh, make that timer accurate. So that is a feature that didn't come into later models. And uh, another little fun fact, it is one of the first calculators to have a code name. It's code name the wizard so yes i am endlessly amused by that we are discussing the wizard and the waz here and i think you can see how some of these first steps towards the apple one happened uh, wozniak used that same hewlett packard storeroom to source parts for his apple one computer and he unveiled it like the next year to the public i went to hewlett packard and said look we can make a product you take the plastic case and the keyboard and a microprocessor and so much rom and so much ram 
you know, it was sort of like our calculators. That's what they were. They had a microprocessor inside, they had ROM, and they had RAM, and they had a keyboard that was on the instant you turned it on, the keyboard was, was paying attention to it, and a little display. So this was just like a growth of calculators. I said we could do it for $800. Boy, he was intrigued by what I said. He, he lost sleep for weeks thereafter, but he couldn't quite justify the use of the resources or that there wouldn't be technical problems or, or maintenance problems or support problems, and he said it was, no, it was sort of the right thing for an outside company. HP's legal department did a nice little three-day scan of all the divisions, came back and said nobody at HP is interested, so here's a legal release. And that would not be the last time Hewlett Packard turned down Wozniak. It is really unfortunate the amount of opportunities they had to work with him and get something started. But still, that place is full of history and interesting stories. Uh, infamously, Wozniak sold his HP 65 to help pay for the first round of Apple Ones. Um, I guess he knew he was going to get the next model at a discount, employee discount. So yeah, I just don't know that people are really aware that there is a machine, a computing machine that predates the Apple I that, perhaps even in some small part, but was partially designed by Wozniak. Now, he's not the lead engineer or anything, but I just I, I think it's amazing for around $30 plus shipping, you can get what I consider is a very cool piece of history. Now, I would recommend getting at least a power adapter and hopefully a battery, too, if you can. I got some newer ones. And they seem to work great, so I think I can recommend that. So check these things out. I think they occupy a really interesting part um, in computing history, in my opinion. So I think there's one last thing I want to cover with you. Um, this is the Internet, and how do we know any of this is true? Well, if I may, I'd like to introduce you now to one Myra Berg. Now, I found Myra's story thanks to a blog post. Uh, it's by John Haskey. I can link that below as well. And he was intrigued by a photograph he saw of one of Steve Jobs' old residences. And there was some piece of art, and he couldn't identify it. And turns out it is from the 1983 gift catalog from Apple. And it is a piece of wall art that says it is from lead designer Myra Berg. So there's some great confirmation right there that... Yeah, the Bergs did indeed know Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. And I encourage you to check out the um, actual blog post. It's full of some fun 80s images and a couple of other you know, great stories from Myra. Um, and, and including a, a wonderful piece of art with uh, some, some cool tigers. <laughs> so, um, all that's very fun. But um, yeah, this, I think, has been just a wild ride for me. <laughs> Going from a calculator to the foundings of Apple One, and all these other personal, interesting stories. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I am always going to think differently of these calculators and their influence in the personal computer world. So I'm curious if you have any great stories. Um, if anyone has any of these cool pieces of rug art, definitely let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening, and, and I hope to tell another one of these calculator stories soon.